All right, everybody, let's get this uh, meeting started. The time is 6.07. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, let's go ahead and do the roll call. Myself, Miguel, uh, George. Present. Dr. Tom. Here. All right, we have quorum. So let's go ahead and move forward. Uh, at this time, we'll take any general public comment. Not comment specific to the item, just general public comment. Good evening. Uh, my name is Anthony Manzano, and I would like to ask this committee to keep the item that is on South Huntington Drive on the agenda. It's a very important issue. It is a large development project that's coming up. It's 90 units. We've had to have some input already from the stakeholders, uh, submitting letters. Uh, they've even spoke on it uh, at some of our general board meetings. Uh, but when I looked at the agenda and it wasn't on there, it was just sort of strange on why the business just it wasn't carried out from the previous month or the prior prior month. Uh, unless this committee actually made a recommendation and formulated it, but just would ask that if it's not going to be mentioned on it or carried over, that that item would still be replaced back on the agenda for that the community can provide its input so that the, this committee can formulate its recommendation and that the, the full board can uh, take action on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzano. Uh, any other comments? So just to clarify, that item will uh, be on the land use agenda at a future time. Um, yes, sir. Your yeah, name? You know, my name is Peter. Peter. Um, I don't have uh, an agenda, um, so can I see one? This is I, the agenda here. Well, I, okay, so I have to stand up and look at it. A little closer. Uh, <laughs> so we don't bite much. And this is this meeting is specifically for what reason? <clears throat> so we have, we have a the say clearly there. So the land use, uh, the LA 32 Neighborhood Council has a standing land use committee. We meet on the third Tuesday of every month. Okay. And the agenda, uh, depending on the business that's out there, will, uh, the agenda will vary on different various items. So this month, we're hearing this one item here, which I can read it to you. We're not quite there yet, but. On A, new business A. Item 4A, discussion 4A. and possible action related to okay. taking that's right. Okay. That's why I'm here. Yes, and your name and uh, yes, ma'am. Your oh. name. State your name, please, for the record. <laughs> my my name is Laura Manuel. Okay. Manuel, actually. Um, but uh, I actually I wanted clarification on what you were. Were you talking about the Soto Huntington Commission? The 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 the, the condensed housing yeah. like 90 units. Correct. I would like to second that that needs to be on the agenda well, at some point. It's supposed to be on this old business, so I'm just trying to okay. still working on it. And the, the, the all items that stay on the agenda are always not should maintain on the agenda. Just to clarify, because this is a presentation, we can have two at the same time because it's a long, very long meeting. Okay. So the next month, hopefully, we can have what's called developers to come in and present themselves what they have. Again, the community, we can have it on the agenda. So we don't want to have two of them because then it'll be a really long meeting for everybody to be here. How do we find out information about when this meeting is? Because I randomly found out about this meeting. Is it yeah. always here? So the land use committee meeting is always on the third Tuesday of every month, and it's always here at this location. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other general public comments? General public comment, not related to any items. Okay. Seeing none. Uh, moving forward. Uh, we are going to skip uh, approval of the minutes. We do not have any minutes for last month. And let's just go straight into new business. The first item is item uh, 4A, discussion of possible action related to taking a position on the proposed Eastern and Lombardi housing development, also known as Vista El Sereno. Case number is listed uh, there. So as many of you know, some of you probably live next to this site. It is a um, Sorry, it's a hilled, uh, hilly location, and it's on the corner of Eastern and Lombardi. What's being proposed there is 42 houses. This is, uh, there have in the past been uh, other proposals there. This is the most uh, most recent, and we have representatives from the uh, development company here, and they'll be doing a quick presentation on this first. So would you like to take it away? Sure, sure, sure. <coughs> Um, do you want me to come up there? Where'd you, where would you prefer that I go? <laughs> um, you can come, you can sit here, you can. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can or there's a spot right there. Everybody can stay right there. <laughs> no. 
speak loudly. I will, I will, thank you. <laughs> you probably want the... Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Kristen Lawner. I am with Burns and Bouchard. Uh, I am here representing this evening Clearwater Communities, who is the uh, developer on the site. I have with me Dan Cassell and Tom Lee from Clearwater. Uh, but basically, we're here uh, to show you the new proposed site plan for this project. Um, the last time we were here, um, we heard concerns about um, some of the, the trees and the desire to keep more of the trees than had been pro proposed. Um, so to that end, we kind of pulled back and took a look at how was, how could we try and meet that need? How could we best try and save some of those trees? Um, so today the parcel is still five acre parcel. Um, this is a proposed single family community uh, average lot sizes of approximately 5,200 square feet. Um, it's three to four bedroom homes, two car garages. Um, m these homes, most of them have, um, well, they all have garages for two vehicles. Um, so the requests for the, for the project are a vesting tentative track map for small lot. Um, there is a request for tree removal. Um, for 39 protected trees. Um, that is down from the original request for 68 protected trees to be removed. Um, and actually it's a range request from 37 to 39. The hope is that we only have to remove 37, but we've got two on the property that um, we're not sure that they will be able to be saved. So um, it also includes a vesting zone change from what is on the property today, uh, QR1-1D, and QRD6-1D to uh, TQRD5-1D. Um, and the zoning administrator's determination for 54 retaining walls varying uh, from three and a half feet to six feet uh, in lieu of what is allowed, which is two 10-foot uh, retaining walls as well as a hall route. Um, what you see behind me is the original site plan that we presented to you. Um, the goal here was that we were trying to look at what was already there, what was flat pad, what was easier to do. Um, but what we heard quite clearly is when you drive by, you see what people saw as a very beautiful hillside. And we were changing that, obviously, with this by putting this road in, et cetera. So let me flip to the next one. So we went in and looked at how do you preserve that, that view that people commented uh, that when they drive by, they saw you know those beautiful trees, and so I think this is the proposal that we have before you today. Um, there's a couple of benefits to this, in addition to providing um, less uh, removal of trees, it also actually moved this driveway. Originally, we had it in that direct corner. This does move it over a bit. One of the other concerns we had heard last time is that it was so close to Harmony, this actually moved that driveway a little bit further away, um, a little bit further away from the line curve that occurs before Harmony. Um, so while we didn't have a concern before about where the driveway was, this allowed us to actually move it a little bit and, and address that concern. So um, some of the things we looked at uh, as we revised uh, the environmental document uh, was, as I mentioned, these trees, we will be, all the protected trees will be replaced on a four to one basis. Um, so any trees that do have to be removed will be replaced. There are requirements from the city on what size and scope they must be. Um, in addition, we looked at, this proposal does have more uh, removal of dirt than the original proposal, um, because we are not looking so much as to what is flat as, as to let's try and protect trees. Um, so we did look at our greenhouse gas study uh, to confirm that we did not have further impacts due to that hauling, which we do not. Uh, we also updated our traffic study um, and again showed that there is no impact on that. Um, and also there were concerns last time about biological resources on the site. So we did have the site mapped and a field <coughs> study prepared. Um, the things that came out of that obviously were the black walnut trees, which I think we're all aware of, 
um, and we have addressed that with the Board of One Mitigation. Uh, there was a comment that there, well not a comment, but there was, uh, they found quarry bat roosts on the property. Um, so we've had to mitigate for that. We will not be able to remove trees uh, during their roosting season. We'll have to have someone come out and actually confirm they are not there. If they are there, we cannot remove trees during that time. That time is August to February. So, you know, if there were roosts, we would not remove during that time. And then the city does require uh, on a site like this that we do a nesting uh, study before we do any removal so that we have to confirm there's no nesting birds on the site um, before tree removal as well. And that was uh, included in our mitigations for our biological study as well, biological resource study. So one of the things last time that we spent a lot of time on was on traffic. People were really concerned about could there be a crosswalk somewhere in the middle, somewhere in the middle? could there be a light at our driveway? Um, those issues. Unfortunately, because we are kind of surrounded by two lights, um, DOT has not recommended that our driveway have a light. They don't feel that it is it's an appropriate distance to have it. Uh, one of the questions last time was, well, could there be a protected crosswalk in the middle? There were LAPD PD officers here last time that said some of the problems with those kinds of signals is that the pedestrian feels quite confident and protected in that crosswalk. <laughs> However, the reality is, is not such. So um, none have been recommended, but I think we would stand in a position to say if the community, Department of Transportation, Council Office wanted to see some type of uh, traffic mitigation here uh, that you know we haven't thought of or is something that hasn't been discussed, <coughs> we'd be open to that conversation and understanding what that is. Um, uh, we have heard loud and clear, I think, that this community, that some in this community would like this preserved for a park. Um, I think, you know, we, we have proposed it for a development project. If, you know, if the Mountains Recreation and Conservation Authority came to us and proposed a market rate purchase, would we say no? No, I mean, they're businessmen, you know? Um, but I think at this time, um, they are proposing this development proposal and do intend to move forward. We don't have a hearing date at this time. We are in our comment period uh, on the mitigated negative declaration with the city. And we're open to hearing any thoughts and comments you have this evening on the changes and any way we might work together. Excellent. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for the presentation. You. Absolutely. So we will now move on to public comments. So let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and allow uh, two minutes for public comment. So let's just start, uh, start from my left here, is there, go this way, and just state your name. Hi, my name's Jade Wong. I still have a question about the parking. If, is there any street parking within the property? Do you want me to just directly yes. answer? Okay. Uh, there is not street <coughs> parking. So each house has <coughs> two guest parking spaces, and a majority, 33 of the homes also have a 20-foot lip in front of that garage. So they would be able to park cars on that lip. Uh, the ones who don't could parallel a car, a car in front of their driveway, but there is not additional street parking. Okay. So how do you accommodate for visitors if well, and everybody that's, has extra cars? Right. So the one who has that, yeah. So they would have that two-car garage to park their cars and the people who live there, and those who have that 20-foot lip would also have um, you space would it there. Fit two cars on that one? Yes, you could fit two cars on there. Yeah, because of the size of it. So. Um, so when you say lift, you mean driveway? Yeah, I mean driveway. Yes, yes. I, I, I'm making two it sound small. It's a 20-foot driveway. Two foot driveway. Four cars yeah. per house theoretically. Could yes. Fit. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> People use the garage as two-foot cars. So, you know, rather than actually, let's have more of an informal discussion, so we'll just keep going this way if folks have questions. Do you have any questions, comments, Miss? Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Mrs. Tata. Uh, how do you build, how do you build, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed with this because it's nonsense to me. How do you build five houses on top of the hilltop without touching the hill? I mean, that's the character of Del Sereno, the hill. How do you cut that? Without, I mean, how I'm going to put houses on the on top of the hill? It reminds me of an ant hill. How? Well, and actually, as you see the hill as you drive by it, the, the kind of highest point of the hill will actually shield those houses in in this section here. Um, 
So I think you actually, we are providing you a better, from the comments we received last time, it was to provide better views of those trees in that hillside with this design than the previous. So you remove the dirt, you remove the hill, mm -hmm. and now you cover it with the trees? I mean, no, we, we're not stairs. removing, yeah, the hill stays. The, the, the portion hills. that is, yeah, the portion that is there is the highest point. Um, so, but yes, there is grading that has to be done to create flat pads for development, yes. So are they, are these homes like overlooking the homes on Klamath Street, like they're Some will be above the homes on Klamath. Um, you know, it would be like any two homes that back up to each other, they would have rear yards that back up to each other and sometimes there is grade differential, differential. I mean, of course there's going to be landscaping in these rear yards and those people have landscaping I mean, in their rear yards. Will there be privacy for the homes? Absolutely. It, it's not, I mean, it's not our goal to build homes that you can see into people's backyards and, and on the converse when there are homes that come above ours, you wouldn't be really in our backyards. So how is this going to help the, the town? Our neighborhood. Our neighborhood. How? When already it's so it's, it's uh, so intensely crowded. It's, it's a joke. I mean, it's, I'm it's serious. This is a joke. I mean, this is a front for Mr. Mood. Vanegas. Period. So you guys are maximizing. I, I'm sorry. The thing is that yeah. the people that live here, here know what's going on. It's period. not good for our neighborhood. <laughs> if you I live here, and I think it's a great idea. Excuse me. Before before we start just evolving into you know people yelling, let's um. If you have a question, feel yeah. free to ask them a question. If you have yeah. comments, please make it to the okay. Land Use Committee. Okay. So I still don't understand how are you going to put all those houses on that little hill without touching the character of what El Sereno is? And I, I think this is a development site. I mean, it does have zoning that allows for housing on it, and um, we are trying our best to design a site that does uh, maintain that beauty that was express expressed about the trees and the hillside. Uh, while also providing that housing opportunity. All right, move, continuing on. Is it Brian? Yes, Brian Larson, okay. and I live on one of the uh, other hills, and I'm sure the people down below me had the same concerns when my home was built as all the other hillside homes were built with the older homes down below. This is zoned. This is zoned for single-family residences. It's not like they're trying to take a piece of open land and convert it into housing. It's always been zoned for single family residences. And the way they have designed it here, um, from the street, you are basically going to still see that hillside, which finally somebody is going to maintain, instead of having all the garbage, the weeds, the broken trees, the homeless people, the vendors on the corner. But now it will be taken care of and be much more beautiful. And we also have a housing crisis in there. Well, and I know the city is really pushing for more housing to be built. Other people in the area have complained that the prices here are just getting too high. They are getting high all across LA. But the reason for that is we don't have enough housing. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Um, I'm glad I'm actually having an opportunity to view something like this. Uh, I've been around for long enough that I'm visually that layout is. I believe the fifth layout that I've actually seen, some going back as far as having an education center up there with on-site uh, faculty housing, teachers and whatnot. Then there was a condominium complex, uh, perhaps even two types of condominium complexes. And then I guess the one before this would have been the fourth one and then this one now the fifth one. So I'm seeing that the developer and uh, the father and daughter are, are listening, I, I guess with this Clearwater organization to the concerns of the community. And I think having that front eastern view, mostly hillside, anyone standing at El Sereno Recreation Center, which will be just across the street, would pretty much have the same view that they'd have today, except that there'd be housings on this southern portion, and then those along the back. A few questions that I do have is, I'm very thankful that they've reduced the, the amount of removing protected trees from by nearly half, which I heard maybe from 68 to 37 which can be close to most of these 45%. And then I would like to ask is, was there any reduction in the amount of homes? Like, was there a larger layout, perhaps? From the original design, there were 53 homes. From the last we presented you, there were 42, and there are still 42 today. So there's an additional 11. I'm sorry, there was a 43 version as well, okay. but yeah. So there's about 10 reduced from the original proposal. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to also echo what Mr. Larson is mentioning. Uh, being involved with the community and seeing what our community really needs 
I would much rather accept a development like this than what was I was mentioning earlier, than a low income to very low income, high density, with 300% magnification of what's allowed on the site. That is ridiculous. That is what our community does not need. And this will help bring a preferred community to El Sereno. It'll make it more affluent, it'll bring business, it'll bring home ownership. I bet you the families inside there will not be gang members. I could just see the sort of the way the community will lay out that it's going to be much better than what's going on at the apartment project on Monterey Road, Huntington Drive, uh, Mariana, Oakland. This is, this is not a community within a community. It's just giving the community which is in, El Sereno, a positive opportunity for that parcel of land because there's been other opportunities in the past and it's always been no, 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 no. At this time, it's, it's or at some time, the community will actually, actually say yes. Thank you. Uh, Kathy, any comments? No. Yoli, or I'm sorry, it's Peter. Okay. Um, so I, I don't really know how this works. And do you work for the city? I do not know. So I'm uh, volunteer. Everyone here on this oh, so board. You are also part of the council. Everyone here is sitting before you. Uh, they're volunteer members, part of the neighborhood council. Okay, because I didn't see it at the last. So I just wanted. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. All right. right. Um, so yeah. So one thing that makes El Sereno special and unique from the rest of the city of Los Angeles are these open spaces. You drive around this neighborhood; they exist. They don't exist elsewhere. It's a unique part of our community. We have a sense that there is nature right in front of us. You know, it doesn't exist in the San Fernando Valley. It doesn't exist on the west side. It doesn't exist on the south side or on the east side. El Sereno is unique. Why are we just, we have so many run down construction everywhere, so much. Why isn't that being redeveloped? For housing, go up and down Eastern and go up and down Valley and go up and down Huntington. There's so, so rotting buildings that can be turned into two, three-story nice apartment structures. Why is the city accepting destruction of one of the last few open spaces in the entire metropolitan area? This is, it, it doesn't make sense. The mayor, on one hand, says he's pro environment, pro you know doing the right thing for the better future, and then on the other hand, they're talking about plowing what little nature is left. Man. We have park, we have parking lots, we have rotten buildings that can be redeveloped into nice housing. Yes, it's zoned. But there's plenty of areas that have been zoned, and if the community responds, the zoning can change. And then another thing, just for logistics, traffic. I drive down Eastern every single morning to go to work. Eastern, there are, there's a middle school there and an elementary school. It is bumper to bumper traffic. All the school buses are lined up. There's one lane of traffic going this way. You're going to add more traffic to our life? Okay, Peter, thank you for your comments. Um, Lily? Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's because this is, you know, a flat rendering. I mean, it's hard to picture things on a hill. But, I mean, when I walked in and I saw this image, I was a bit disappointed because I thought it was actually, if I compare this rendering to the other rendering, the other rendering seemed to be you know, to be more appealing, because here it's just like, almost seems like track homes. And um, it's it's just, I mean, I don't know. But um, parking is a concern, because honestly, I don't think real people really use the garage to park the cars, they use it for storage. Um, so I'm concerned about the parking. I also would like um, for us to stick to our community plan, um, you know, to stick with the character <coughs> of the community. And I think that building something like this will be going away from the character of El Serino, which is our open hill space. Yeah. And um, 
you know, I know this is zoned for residential, but it's not zoned for this many homes. I think um, I would support anything with, that is zoned by right. Um, you know, this is just too many homes. Um, what about trash collection? Um, is it going to be this, the city collecting? How how is that going to look like? Um, you know, uh, trash day. And then um, I missed the beginning of the presentation, so I'm not sure if this is only like the top of the hill. What what road? How is the what is the road like to get to these homes? And um, you said for the Mountain Conservancy. Um, what is market rate value? I mean, what did you mention? We have not done a, a recent appraisal on the property. Mm -hmm. If we did enter into that conversation. Do you have any profiles and across the site to show the relationship of the surrounding residents, your proposed project, and the hilltop going down to Eastern? Do you have a profile? We don't. Um, sections. Yeah, sections. yeah, no, we don't have we, sections. Yeah. We, we have then, one on the old plan. So you're, you're going to be taking a lot more dirt you know, um, from the hill. How many feet would the hill be dropping in your plants? And what is the the retail? What are these homes? Um, what do you, what are the plants? What is the the price range? Are you planning to no, no, no. I, as she's saying, what is the market rate value of, of the home? And I think at this point, we're two years out from what market rate would look like, at least at this point. Um, I don't know if you have a price point that, you know, I don't know that I can give you an answer on that. But If we were to do it today, what would it be like? I don't know the answer. It would be comparable to any other of the remodeled homes. New homes yes. in the area. So, yeah. I mean, so but, I mean, I don't. How many square feet? Yes, about seven, 1,700 and change to about 2,200 and change. Yeah. About three bedroom to four Around bedroom. 2,000 square foot per unit, roughly. 17 to 2,200 square feet yeah. per unit. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's yeah. twice as big as mine. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Yoli. Uh, Jackie? Well, um, just my concern is the traffic also and taking away the hillside. Um, my daughter does attend Farm Bell on the tree, and coming out of Farm Bell, there's only one way to go, and that's to make a right. So even if you have to go back to El Serenimo School because I work there or whatever, you still have to go down, make a U, and then, and then head back. And the traffic is really cramped. I don't know if you've observed that or sat there during the mornings and saw how crazy it gets. And sometimes the, the patrol and officer has to be there to give people tickets because it gets a little crazy. And it's like that every single day. So, um, yeah. I'm all about improving our, our um, El Sereno community. But um, I think taking away our, our nature, we ha I still have coyotes. I live on the hill. I still have coyotes that come in through my yard. and and all the squirrels and the coons and stuff, and I think that we take away some of our, our, our environment. Our Very good. Thank you. Uh, Melissa? Um, I, I think my biggest concern about this project is the grading, which others have mentioned. Um, there were questions about, you know, how will this hill look with this project on, and, and there weren't any uh, elevations available, but I think I can describe it. Um, because I've studied the plan, and if you imagine the hilltop as a lemon meringue pie with a very steep topping to it, and then you cut away three quarters of that pie, and then you leave a quarter of it, that's what this hill will look like. This hill has been graded down to a two to one slope on two sides, and then it's got the natural slope on the one side along eastern. And, it, and that hill that's been graded away comes up to a very small point at the top, according to the grading plan. So what you're left with is, is two manufactured slopes and one natural slope. And the manufactured slopes top out at 30 feet because they're removing 30 feet of grade from this hilltop so that it'll be up to 30 feet high with two stacked six foot tall retaining walls along the bottom edge. And that's what's in the backyards of those homes that are, facing, that are against the hill. Um, it doesn't do any difference it doesn't approach the visibility from Eastern Avenue any differently, but the visibility from all the homes surrounding in La Calandria, they're, they're now looking onto a manufactured pyramid of soil and then, and then the tracked home layout that's there. For me, the grading is a problem 
Uh, not only because you're taking away 82,000 cubic yards, which is a significant amount, and, um, and that's being trucked away in a 87 haul trips per day. So 87 trucks a day, which is, if you think about the, the number of, in the day, in and out. if you think about the uh, hours in the day, I'm, I'm really curious about how that works, but nonetheless, we're talking about taking away 30 feet of hilltop with 82,000 cubic yards in order to bring in 42 homes, which, you know, a lot of numbers. What's really concerning is the request for a zone change to allow this. This property and all the parcels that are in it are in the hillside zone, so they're protected by the hillside ordinance, which is a permanent queue condition. And um, that zone change clears that condition, so there's no more grading limit. Right now, the grading limit on that parcel without a zone change is 1,000 cubic yards. You can take 1,000 cubic yards and you can haul it away, and that's the limit. But with the zone change, and the queue condition cleared and not reinstated, then they're allowed to take 82,000 cubic yards, which is a huge amount, a huge amount of soil. So that zone change is really disturbing, not just because it's clearing queue conditions and you know taking away the hillside's ordinance protections, but also because it sets a precedent. So the next small lot developer who wants to build over on Amethyst, 42 lots, or the next small lot developer who wants to build on another hill, then has this precedent to point to to say, well, over on Eastern Lombardy, they got a zone change and they were able to do this. So that precedent is a problem, and the use of small lot development in the hillside zone is a problem. Small lot development is a great planning tool. It's a planning tool that was developed to use for infill lots. This is technically considered an infill lot, <coughs> but if you look around our area, around the city of Los Angeles, there are other priority sites to be used for infill before you start touching open space. So this is, again, it's just a misuse of, of a reasonable planning tool and a misuse of a zone change. That, I think, is the biggest problem. There's lots of little problems with this project, lots of little ones. But that precedent and that ongoing kind of permission to develop our hillsides in this way and to ignore other, other spaces, like you were talking about, other infill spaces that really could be useful along our commercial district, that's, that's a big problem. And I, I hope that the committee won't support that. Has the zone change taken place? No, it's a request. Thank you, thank you. And your name again is? Uh, Laura Mann. That's right. Um, I, I, I don't know, obviously, a, a lot about this compared to you do, <laughs> other people do. But I, I support it in the sense that what I hear, I've been in the community for almost 10 years, and, um, and I live right over the, near that area, and, uh, and there's new construction being built on hillsides above where I live right now, and there's another one up the street. There's all kinds of new construction. So I think that the reality is we are in a housing shortage, as Brian is saying, that LA is basically needs to increase more housing. and. I love that El Cerino is single family homes, that it's not apartment buildings, apartment buildings, apartment buildings, apartment buildings. And so when I hear about a, a development happening where they're going to squeeze 90 units on Soto or something in Huntington, that alarms me. Because I talk about a parking and a traffic nightmare and talk about gang activity and drugs. I mean, you go over to that area and now, the apartments that are already there, you can just see that things happening right in front of them. So the idea that we're going to have another thing where we're going to make single family homes that's going to have a higher price point, which is going to invite more affluent people in the community, which means that we're going to have pe people are going to want to come in and look at Alhambra and Huntington and Eastern, and they're going to say, hey, what new businesses can we bring into this area because we have new families? We're going to be improving our community overall. This is for everybody who's going to be doing better off by having you know, new buildings, new properties. Yes, we should still continue improving all the broken down buildings on Alhambra and all the broken down buildings on Huntington and <coughs> improving the current homes that need to be fixed up. I, I encourage everybody that lives here to take pride in their home and do what they can to fix it up. I want this community to be a really nice community. So to me, the idea that we want to block single family homes that have now incorporated you know, trees and the hillside, which was the complaint. And I do, I support the hillsides. I love the hillsides. We have other hillsides. We have Ascot Park. You know, we have other hillsides. Um, and I, I do understand your precedents, worry. I do get that as an idea. Um, so I do have sympathies to these concerns. But I think it's, the, it's going to be like, no, nothing can ever change. 
that's just not realistic. That's not realistic for Los Angeles. What's this Los Angeles? You know, it's just not realistic. Like, we are going to change it. So let's change in the way before we get single family homes versus apartment buildings with low income, because something's going to go in these places. So let's make it to improve our community where we're going to get new businesses and people wanting to invest in businesses in Alhambra and Huntington and so forth and get new families. And, and uh, I think it's just really good for our community. So I, I think it's a great idea and I totally support it. Thank you. Thanks for comments. My name is Delia Guerrero. I have a, one specific question regarding, was there an, an entrance put on the Lombardi side? Did there, I see that? There is an entrance on the Lombardi side to those, exactly. four, to those four units. Yeah, I know. So I live right <coughs> off of Lombardi and Bordeaux. So my question is, does that mean that the parking that's there now, that will go away? What's that street going to look like? It's still going to look like we're going to be able to park cars right outside? It has an internal street. So as you see, it, we come into an internal street. So here. where does that driveway start? Like right at the bend of that? Where would that driveway start? You guys can that top section yeah. the northern section, right on the corner yeah. of the right there. About 200 feet yeah. from the intersection. Yeah. So, so 200 feet from an intersection is a safe way to enter a driveway? Yes. When those cars it. whip around they off of the Eastern? Car rags is, is a, has what a I'm saying is, where's this, the driveway for rags? Where was it? 50 feet. When you exit, right off the exit. So that's what I'm saying, that entrance. where that stop sign kind of is, that's where the entrance is going to be. Is My concern is that the safety, the safety of like that coming around the corner on that short entrance and in. Could they put a stop sign there? Oh, there's actually a light <laughs> there. Yeah. But so there's a the light. Close when you're on Eastern and you turn on to Lombardi. So currently, so my, our parking will stay there. How are those people going to enter? They just go around the park cars and enter yeah. into their driveway. Yeah. And exiting, is it going to, they can turn right or left or right turn only? It because is they're going to sit there a long time mm -hmm. before they get out of their homes. Because that, uh, if you leave, I leave past 720 in the morning, it takes three lights for me to go from a doe onto Lombardi, onto Eastern. So it's wow. three lights I wait. Cars are coming from these stops, and this is what we're doing. So that's gonna impact people to wanna go around to Gambier. Hello, has anybody been on Gambier? That's, and I noticed when I was reading also about the traffic, um, what did they do, the traffic surveys? The it's traffic interesting surveys. because they're, they're surveying Valley and Eastern and Huntington and Eastern, and it's like what happened to Klamath and Gambier? You know, the smaller streets where the residents are. And we don't choose the intersection. No, I know that, I realize yeah. that. I mean, uh, my husband, he does that, he does plans, he does all that. He's so that's why I said, my thing is more uh, safety concern. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for comments. And wrap it up the public comments. Any comments on this side? No public comments, okay. All right, so uh, seeing no further public comment on this item, we're gonna move to discussion, board discussion. I'm gonna look to my colleagues here first. Dr. Tom, would you like to sure. kick us off? Uh, been through the other ones. This is somewhat better. Some of my concerns. Uh, no pro farms, but anyway. Uh, the, intersect the two intersections that you have with Eastern and Lombardi. And the fact that the Lombardi one is so close to the traffic line. Uh, you're gonna have a big problem there. There's also a matter that remember, those are the only two entry points and exit points for trucks carrying 10 cubic yards each times a lot per hour. And my say turning from the project site, turning left across the eastern to go southbound, because I presume the haul route is to the 710. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. And my say I have spent about 12 hours in the uh, Board of Building and Safety Commission haul route discussions, and that's going to be a big problem. 
And one of the issues will be frequency of turns, both going in and coming out, and perhaps at the same time. So you're going to have to have a lot of flag people. There's also a matter that getting those trucks from Eastern Tomb Valley. Uh, anyone that's been down at Eastern <coughs> Valley during the morning, oh, okay. That, does that mean that you're going to have haul restrictions on hours? That is, eh, not before 10, not after 4 p.m., things like that. And I say, in the background, I would hate to be the people to the south side and to the east side because they're going to get hammered by noise, equipment exhaust, trucks being loaded and unloaded, concrete trucks coming in, and the concrete pumps, everything regarding the construction. So frankly, in my view, their life is going to be held for about two years. The construction schedule has stated those four years. Uh, but the, the big stuff will be in those first two years. So I say, until I see a real plan for that, I'm quite concerned because I spent about eh, 10 years with Parsons Corporation in the environmental health and safety for construction management on the LA Metro Rail and on the Shell refineries down in Carson and Wilmington. And always having to protect the existing residents that are trying to carry on their life might say, what's the setback from the buildings facing the south and the or buildings with the rears to the east and to the south? Looks doesn't look very much. We're meeting the required backyards for those. So uh, required backyards for it, yeah. But I say I, I'm trying to deal with real people rather than numbers on the book. And if it's numbers on the book, then uh, how are you going to personalize this as a small lot development? And what will be the deed restrictions? Let me, do you have any deed restrictions? Because, hey, please, who's going to be in charge of this area? The maintenance association. Maintenance association. Does that include operations? How about security? That is, how do you <coughs> prevent somebody from coming in here, parking, and then going through to other people's yards? You're talking about during construction? No. Well, that, that too, but during operations. Well, we, we didn't. And I say, I know the small lot development ordinance and things like that, subdivision. And I say, I know the maintenance <coughs> association. Well, I say, there should be a homeowners association on the deed. Fun function is the same. The function is the same. However, I say, why did they designate it as maintenance rather than just homeowners association? Because in the current one, compared to the earlier one, the parcels are, I say, there's more public land or uh, project land than parcel land. And the parcelization map is kind of strange compared to the earlier ones. So, uh, Fire, seismic, ground movement, storm water runoff and collection, and then the irrigation using the uh, stored uh, storm water. How many fire hydrants? How many fire hydrants? All of it's designed to code and be approved. So you go What's through required with, by with, with the fire department has it's a their whole fault. process. So here, here's one of my things. Last night, I was on a 36 parcel development over at Mount Washington. So I might say the same sorts of problems. 
oh, well, don't worry, it'll comply with whatever the city gets approved. Well, in CEQA, objectivity, full disclosure, you don't have a plan already? And what? I say, I've been around quite a bit. I have 11 acres of open space oops, on my backside, and I say, getting some training as to what to look for. So, uh, I would highly recommend a full EIR so that alternatives and lots of mitigation could be uh, submitted, and I will be submitting formal comments next week. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Uh, George, any comments? Mm -hmm. So I've been here with well, this committee or as a stakeholder, which is a initial onset of development proposal with the uh, wanted to build a school and condominiums and cafe. So I, I, I do I gotta applaud the developer for at least listening to the concerns of the residents and coming back and taking it information and going back and you know reworking it and coming back and presenting to us. Uh, I like the fact it's not a it's not a big old condominium complex. Uh, there is single family homes, although the amount of homes do trouble me. Uh, as a stakeholder, though, on this committee, I have to go with what I'm listening. Uh, and what I'm hearing is concerns of traffic, uh, safety, uh, school traffic. I'm hearing uh, the amount of dirt that's going to be moved, not only moving the hillside, but also through the community, uh, with you know the trucks coming in and out on a daily basis for, I think, I heard two years, I heard four years, for a long time. Uh, that creates problems with the schools nearby, with all the dust in the air, and just traffic overall already in <coughs> that area. And then, uh, you know, the number of homes, if they could be reduced, uh, it'd be great. I don't know if you have ever been told, but maybe larger homes, uh, on less homes on larger lots might be better. Just, just throwing it out there. But I think the one that especially I'm concerned about is the is uh, precedent, precedent this will set the community and we already have had two other large developments proposed uh, not quite like this this is not one of the better ones but nonetheless uh, over on Onyx and Paradise Hill and then one over here on Soto and Mission and I think that as a resident and as you know a homeowner allowing such, such growth at this magnitude would, would create a loss of our uniqueness as I've been said with our hillsides with our with our uh, wildlife, uh, with, this, with the view we have. You know, we could go out and walk these hills and have a sense of being away from the urbanness that we live in. And that's unique for anywhere in LA, really. I mean, you think about the sprawl that we live in, and yet you have these hills and you have this open space that you can still hike in and run through and, you know, enjoy. You know, my kids enjoy my back hill. Um, you know, all the time catching lizards or trying to catch lizards or <laughs> seeing, you know, coyotes or seeing, you know, hawks. I think this is a, a something that we as a community have to take into account that <coughs> if we lose this, it's not going to come back. So that's that's my concern. And I think Mr. Tom made some good points. I'm not as technical uh, as he is in, in his knowledge of, of, of things, but I do want to see maybe a full EIR done just to see, you know, what it is we're looking at for real. Because, you know, you, you make comments about you know, uh, traffic, uh, trash cans, and and you know, uh, fire hydrants, and so many comment about just the view what it's gonna look like, as renderings, and you know, I, I wish we had some of that here so people could take away from from this meeting a little more, you know, visual of what it is exactly if they're looking at. So that's why the only picture they have, yeah. Okay. Here. I understand <coughs> what uh, Mr. Garcia here was, was, was mentioning. I'm also a, a resident of Al Serino, my name is Troy Carvajal. Um, I would love to see something like a computer generated image where it's more of a 3D to show us really, like what Jorge is saying, what it's going to look like. This is great, we've seen these things before. But if we can see things maybe more, uh, I'm not even sure, just a CGI is what I refer to it as, computer generated image where you can do things. It's almost as, you know, the, the magic of, uh, you know, cinematic 
movies. Same thing, same concept. I don't think it's that expensive or that costly, but it will give us more of a reality to it. That's all. Okay. So there's, uh, you know, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, this very important issue, right? Surprised by how many people came out and just the, the wide spectrum of different comments that we've heard about tonight. Um, you know, I walked up that hill. I hope you guys don't mind. I walked up on a Sunday, and you know, it's site security. <laughs> and uh, walking up there, there's a lot, a lot of trees. There's clearly a lot of uh, indications of wildlife living there. There's, you know, uh, coyote scat, different things like that. There's also a lot of illegal dumping there. There's transients that live there, right? And um, I, I think that, me personally, I would like to see some houses there. I think it's appropriate to have houses there. As a community, we have to continue to promote, uh, well, all communities benefit from a diverse group of uh, residents who live there. and. As a city of Los Angeles, we have to continue. We have this this housing crisis, right? And there's a need for housing to be there, right? Um, so I, again, I feel conflicted about this project because I see the need to have houses. I, I've been up there. I think it would be a great place to have houses, right? But I kind of share some of the, the sentiments that you all have here tonight about traffic. Um, there's 42 houses. Seems quite a quite a bit up there to have up there. You know, although, um, what, but we also have to think about what could, what else could go up there, right? If this developer sells it, well, let, let me ask a few questions. Uh, could you build anything else up there? Yeah, I believe with the current zoning, with about three quarters of it's RD6, um, you can do um, fairly high density apartments. And if we did that, the city measure JJJ would, would uh, want you to have up to 20% affordable, you know, low income, but you could do apartments without a zone change. You could also do largely this project, but maybe Condominium. six or, well, for rent or for sale. I don't think it, it specifies you could do for rent or for sale. What part of the parcel would be We haven't studied it for that. Our, our intention isn't to build apartments here. I'm just answering Mr. Vargas's question about what else could be there. Do you know which parcel is there for that could be apartments? The, th the RD6 from the top of the No, no, you know the point. No, I know where it is, but we're just a little pointer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just. It, I'm not very good with this, but it's not working. You need to get closer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's on. You just need to get closer. Need a battery. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Uh, it doesn't it show on the screen. It doesn't. It, it won't show on the okay. screen. Okay. I'll just just go I'll around. Just walk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just just roughly, I th I, I think RD six is this. Like this part of the site is already six, and then down here, um, I think down here, about a, maybe like 25 or so percent of the site is R1. Yep. Yeah, and then the balance of it's already six, so it has this inconsistent zone. So those homes that are going this way, are they single family homes? Or are they yeah. It, all single family dwellings. All. Yeah, what, what we're showing is all detached single family homes. So down at the bottom would be a single family zone. Yeah, this, this area. Down here, three quarters of the side is our if, With the current, you, you could do like R1 that is on change and buy right. The balance of it, you can do like an RD6, you have um, you can do apartments, apartments or condos. Or condos, yeah, for rent or for sale. You could also do single family, uh, but the app, the average, like the average minimum lot size is is six thousand feet versus our ask is five thousand. That's the difference between RD six and RD five, roughly. Andy, will you permit like a uh, not really a sort of question, but maybe just listen what everyone's mentioning as well as the stakeholders, maybe a minute or that. I think so. Yes, so okay. let's go ahead and allow that. So let's add for uh, another minute of additional comment. Anyone would like to make comment at this time?
I, I, I'm listening to the stakeholders, and I, I really like what Melissa mentioned about the, the extent of the dirt removed. You know, I, I have no idea. I'm not an architect or an engineer on this stuff. But if it allows for 1,000 and they're asking for like 87,000, I'm trying to see if there's a possible way to redesign this in a format that maybe they could come down to 50,000 rather than having 87. I'm saying, well, 50 is still a lot. Yes, it is. But then I'm listening to what Jorge said, and I really like what he mentioned, is perhaps reducing the size of the home, I mean, uh, the size of the amount of homes, but increasing the lot size and value. Maybe having it $100,000 more expensive, but taking away five properties, which might alleviate from that excess of, of soil that would be removed. And what I'm thinking is maybe in this bottom right, I don't know if you want to say it, bottom right corner, but I see like three here and then two here, and just maybe just leave that open land. I don't know if that's more of the peak of the hill or the base of the hill, but it will also connect the front of the homes to have open space because everyone, like they said, I think uh, Yolanda said, it's like track homes. Yes, it does. So if you could sort of bring that open space to the frontage, which would be this little turn at the bottom, <coughs> and I don't know if it makes sense, say, you know what, we need every house we could get, but yeah, but if you're increasing the lot size, increasing the value, we're gonna bring better community members, but you're also absorbing in the amount of soil being removed, the impact on the community, and also just changing the feature a little bit by, by incorporating what we're asking for. Thank you. Any other additional comments? Yes. Um, if we increase the size of the homes, the prices are going to go up just as it costs more to build. And some of the, the first uh, concerns in the first meetings were um, no apartments because it brings in a, um, a lower elements to the area, more crime. Um, if you, and then people were really against an HOA and gates because then it would make them separate from the rest of the community. So Clearwater Communities was adamant on keeping it open, but also took responsibility of caring for the hillside because it was the option of the city caring for it. And we know the city is not doing that. The city won't touch it. Comments here. I was just going to address the housing issue. There are a thousand ways to make good quality housing. We don't have to destroy the last open space. We have 92,000 acres but, across the street. But people talk about housing as a problem in LA, which it is. But we have endless of property that could be developed, redeveloped, to provide good quality housing. So why don't we focus on that rather than destroy something that will never, ever come back? I mean, that could be an open space for all the children in our community, for our people. We live here. So you know. just to address that comment, I think somebody would have to buy it and make it a We know that. We know that. We know that. It's called the Elephant city. Hill. The city has to, we can go to the city and fight a battle. Well, it's not going to happen overnight. But does the city know? Because I don't think LA knows <coughs> much goes on in the neighborhoods. Housing, but I just wanted to address it because it was brought up many times. The problem for housing can be addressed all over the place. We have crummy one-story buildings. You can tear them down and build three nice big houses. We have quality housing on it. You know, and that's everywhere. So we don't have to have such a massive thing. I would just, I mean, and plus also, it only caters to the wealthy. I'm a teacher. I could never afford to live there. Eight hundred some thousand dollars. The middle class, forget it. The working class, forget it. But, you know, when we live here too. <laughs> Well, my, my concerns were not addressed. Um, is it LA Sanitation that's going to collect trash? Or is it yes. Going to be, yes. Yeah. And then, um, how, the, the driveway, the entrance, I mean the street, um, how is it? Like when you enter east, um, from Eastern, how is it, how, how do you reach the top? There's this one street that comes in from Eastern. Right. On the lower, and it goes directly east and then makes a left turn. And that, it, it, it does start to slope up, but it all is designed to work for San, LA, you know, the normal mm -hmm. LA sanitation trucks. So there wouldn't be like 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
You're correct. On the uh, on the vested tentative map, there is the request for a merger of land that's currently public right of way because the right of way widens from 10 feet at the adjacent property to 15 feet along this frontage, and our request is to have that deeded from public right of way to private property, and that will then be used for the landscape buffer along that sidewalk and will become a portion of the landscape in addition to the triangle we were just talking about that would be maintained by the homeowners association. Is that, so is that buffer required by the city? Is it a required buffer? Um, the, the buffer serves two purposes. One, really to protect people on the sidewalk from the drivers coming out of the driveway. There's also a fire department requirement for 28 feet um, clear to the sky from the houses, and so it's serving a portion of that purpose so as well. It allows you to set the house back far enough to well, allow that. It, it to really put the effect on the house is that the house doesn't then push any farther back into the hillside. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the more it goes back, <coughs> the more we, we, we cut up into the hillside. Sure. Yeah. So it is a, it is a required uh, it's, landscape it's a, it's strip a, there. Yeah, a requested landscape strip. Okay. Yeah. And in order to in order to fit it there, we need to work into the public right of way. Yes. Yeah. And, the, and I'll call it the quid pro quo is if the public um, right of way personnel are, are willing to transfer that, then it becomes part of the area that gets maintained by the homeowners association as it's not a city maintenance strip. That makes sense. Any other uh, public comments on this item before we wrap this up? Any last uh, comments? Okay. Um, so we heard everyone tonight. We got a good sense of how uh, at least the people here in the neighborhood feel, right? And you know, thanks, thank you to the Clearwater communities for coming out tonight. We appreciate your time. Um, I personally feel very conflicted about this project. On one hand, I do would like to see housing up there. I do understand and recognize the need to have housing up there. Uh, I think there are better uses for this site than what it is now, which is there's transients living up there and there's legal dumping. However, these houses here, what's being proposed tonight, I personally do not support. I believe that there are too many houses on this space. It, it's very alarming to me to hear that 80 what is 82,000 uh, square, cubic square feet? Cubic yards? Cubic yards? Yeah. The, the correct number is actually 78,000 78, cubic yards. 78, but it's still, yeah, it's yeah. 78,000. Well, it's five Well, and it was like 52,000 low on the previous plan because that was working more with the topography and, un and, and reminding everybody that the site was completely previously built on. It had commercial on Lombardi, it had an apartment building on the top. That yeah, was also used been, as a fraternity house, <laughs> and then it had single family, you know, on the bottom. So, with with that previous development, we were looking at like, well, if we build where building exactly was, that minimizes the the impact. But then, but it harmed the trees. But it but it yeah. took more trees, so we changed it. The only reason we changed it was it had to do with the trees. So I understood, it's very difficult for you as well. You're trying to appease everyone and all the different needs, right? Uh, at first, trying to work with the topography, and then now it's trying to save trees. But, um, so uh, just moving forward, uh, this this plan here, again, there's the issue of a lot of soil, uh, a lot of the soil being removed, issue of insufficient amount of parking, right? It, it's true that these houses have uh, four, potentially four units, or four parking stalls. But uh, if any of those people were to ever have a party, or invite friends over, where would they park? Right? That's, that's uh, definitely an issue. Uh, the entrance, the Lombardi entrance to the, the four homes there, that entrance is a little, it's not ideal, right? It could be a little bit further away. Um, so there, there are clearly quite a few things about what's being proposed tonight that I don't feel that uh, I personally can support this. I don't know how the, my colleagues feel about this. I'd like to propose a resolution. So, Dr. Tom has a resolution. George, do you, do you have any comments before we get to that? Do you have any last comments? No? Any last comments? 
Okay. Let's, let's hear your resolution. Okay, as currently proposed and with consideration of stakeholders, issues, concerns, questions, and et cetera from here, the Land Use Committee opposes the project and recommends that the board oppose the proposed project unless amended and supported by a more adequate, complete CEQA document and related public involvement. Is there, uh, that's the motion, at, that's the uh, motion on the floor. Is there a second? I second. Two more seconds. All right, let's, uh, let's vote on this item. So the item for us, do you, is this, um, do you have a list in there? Well, forget about all the other stuff. That's for next week. Okay. Motion is the, the project as currently proposed and with consideration of the consideration of stakeholder neighborhood issue, concerns, questions, etc. The Land Use Committee shall oppose this project and recommend that the board oppose the project as well unless it is amended and supported by a more adequate, complete CEQA document and public involvement. Um, let's go ahead and vote on this item. Can I ask a question? But by CEQA, do you mean EIR? Uh, generally, it would be an EIR. So it would, could be a modification of the MND, but in general, alter the alternatives that people want and the mitigation is more attuned to having an EIR than a mitigated negative. Let me ask Dr. Tom, why is there a need to have an EIR for this? Uh, versus why can't we just oppose and say, you know, present something else? Uh, I say to try to reflect the fact that people want more analysis, that they want a higher level analysis. And I say a lot of the things that we've been discussing is alternatives. For a mitigated neck deck, you don't have to have an alternative. And an EIR, you have alternatives. Including do nothing. Understood. Okay. Uh, there's a currently there is a motion on the floor, so let's uh, go ahead and vote on this. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Oh. Okay. The item passes three zero. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that that concludes tonight's agenda. Again, thank you for everyone who attended tonight. And remember the deadlines for comments on the mm -hmm. mitigated neck deck is next week. <coughs> How does that work? 26. Mm -hmm.